onto your hands and knees with a blanket underneath your knees and shins for padding. Find a neutral position with extended arms, open hands, and then let your hips sink forward and down. And we'll start to do some hip circles. So take your hips over to the left and trace a big circle with your hips. So your hips move back over the heels and then take your hips over to the right and continue until the hips come forward and down and continue this way. Bring your attention to the sensations you feel in your body. Deepen your breath here. Let your weight come all the way onto your hands and fingers and trace a nice big circle with your hips. Feel the whole pelvis involved in the circle. The front of the pelvis, the back of the pelvis, the sides of your hips circling around and around. Don't leave out any part of the circle. There's no wrong way to do this. Be in your body. And the next time your hips come around to the front, pause in the front and start circling in the other direction. Let your hips move to the right and back and to the left and back to center. Let this be a full body experience. Let your body move with this in a way that feels natural to you. Explore the movement here. Big circles with the hips. And then start to make your way back to neutral, coming onto hands and knees long spine. Now we'll practice cat-cow starting from hands and knees. As you exhale, you'll tuck your pelvis under, bring your chin towards your chest and let your whole back round. And then smoothly move into the inhale as you lift and spread your buttocks, open your chest and look up. Again, exhale into cat, tucking the pelvis, chin to chest. And inhaling into cow, letting the belly drop, lifting and spreading the buttocks, lengthening the throat. And exhale again into cat. Continue now at your own pace. Feel the journey into cat, the journey into cow, noticing each step along the way. And also notice the full expression of each pose. And when you feel ready, come back into neutral. Lengthen your spine, extend through the arms. Have two blocks ready for extended child's pose with blocks. Come to hands and knees with your hands resting on the blocks. And then bring your big toes together. Separate your knees so that they're a little bit wider than your hips. And then pull your hips back so they're over the heels. And slide the blocks forward so that you stretch your arms and your armpits and your torso. Feel yourself pulling your buttocks back and down and think of the front of the rib cage extending forward. Long abdomen here. For a moment, lift your chest, lengthen the front of your trunk and slide your blocks even further forward and then relax your forehead back down. Think of lengthening the sides of your waist, lengthening the arms, the armpits, 
Lengthen deep inside the trunk. Breathe steadily here. Keep your arms active, your hands open, pressing into the blocks. Even a sense of the arms lifting. Can you find more space in your trunk, more length in your abdomen? Breathe here. Smooth inhale, smooth exhale. And slowly come back up to hands and knees. Come onto your feet for Ardha Uttanasana variation. Place the blocks about a foot in front of your feet, which are hip distance apart hands on hips, roll your thighs in and pull your thighs back, lengthen your spine, let your shoulders go back, and then bend forward as you hinge at the hips with bent soft knees and place your hands on the blocks. You want to avoid being round in your back and tucked in your pelvis here. Instead, bend your knees more, reach your groins and inner thighs back and lift and spread the buttocks and reach the front bottom ribs forward to open the chest, even look forward. Long through the arms, long through the sides of your waist. Focus on being long through the front of your spine. So not tucking the pelvis at all here, Bend your knees a lot so that you can lift and spread the buttocks. Inner thighs back, front bottom ribs forward for a long abdomen. And if it's available to you, you can straighten the legs a little more. But the priority is to keep the buttocks lifting and open and the front of the spine long. And now bring your hands to the floor as you fold more deeply down. Hands to hips, lift the shoulders, lift the chest, and come on up. Now we'll practice Uttanasana. Feet hip distance apart, hands to hips. Pull your thighs back so the pelvis doesn't sit forward at all. But the pelvis and thighs move back. Shoulders back, open the chest and look up, and then fold deeply down, hinging at the hips, and bring your fingertips to the floor. If it helps you to bend your knees, you can do that. You want to think of lifting and lengthening the backs of your legs so the buttocks lifts up and the pelvis turns up and over the legs, which are very long. Whether your knees are bent or straight, you can think of still lifting and lengthening the musculature of the legs. And let your spine relax and release down. Let your head be heavy and relaxed. Let your elbows bend out to the sides. And let your abdomen be soft and receding back so the belly is not at all hardened or puffed out but the abdomen is long and soft, receding back. The legs are strong and lengthening upwards. The buttocks is lifting. And breathe here in Uttanasana. Be even on your feet, inner and outer edges of the feet, both grounded. And now bring your hands to your hips, shoulders up to the ceiling, and come up with an open chest. Now take your strap and wrap the strap around your sacrum so the strap will rest right at the upper buttocks. And then Wrap the straps around and through so they're behind you as you see and grab onto the straps with your hands with the palms facing forward, lengthen your spine, roll the shoulders back, stand tall and as you pull the strap 
on the right side to the right and the strap on the left side to the left, the strap will teach you how to internally rotate at the very roots of your thighs. So enjoy that internal rotation. Roll the upper arms back. Be long in your trunk and pull the thighs back in space so there's no sitting forward in the pelvis. Rather, the pelvis comes back. The abdomen is long. The thighs are rolling in. And then release the pose. And now hold on to the strap behind your back with your palms facing forward. And let your hands be quite wide. So slide your hands out to the sides so the strap is quite wide behind you. And pull your thighs back, lengthen your abdomen, lengthen your spine from bottom to top. And start to reach the strap far back behind you. And let there be tension on the strap. If it feels too difficult, then you can slide your hands further apart. And if it feels too easy, you can move your hands closer together. Connect your feet to the ground and draw up through the sides of your body. Be long in your side ribs and keep reaching the, back, the strap back and up to get a nice stretch in your arms. Let the chest move forward as the strap moves back. Extend your legs so they're really tall. Feel as if your legs are reaching all the way up to the height of your lungs. Tall in the trunk. And then start to reach the strap back and all the way down. And now move your hands just a little bit closer together. And we'll repeat this again. Parallel long legs, long abdomen. Reach the strap back as the chest opens, as the sides of the body lift and lengthen. Keep extended through the arms. Be even in right and left sides of your body, even in right and left arms. Reach the strap back and up. And then slowly, keeping tension on the strap, reach the strap back. Staying tall through your whole body, staying connected with your feet to the ground. Spine lifting from bottom to top. Lower the strap all the way down by your buttocks. And now place a block between your feet for an Urdhva Hastasana variation. So your feet will frame the block and help you be parallel and aligned. And then grab the strap with your hands at about shoulder distance apart or a little wider and lift the strap up overhead and start to create length in your limbs and length through your whole body. Can you create length from a very internal place. Pull your thighs back. Pull the upper inner thighs back. Lift your pelvis up off your legs. Lift your belly up off your pelvis. Lift your rib cage up off your abdomen. Extend long through the armpits and the elbows. Be grounded through your feet and lift your hands higher. Make space between your feet and your hands and breathe steadily here. Become long, open the breath, and then exhale and lower your hands down. And now for Utkatasana chair pose with a strap, feet hip distance apart, Lift the arms up into the sky. Hands are holding onto the strap. Lengthen your body and then exhale and sit back as if you're sitting back into a chair. Parallel thighs. Reach your buttocks back and down. Think of the buttocks spreading. Firm, strong legs here. And lift up through the front of the spine so the chest is open. You can firm your arms back. 
shoulder blades forward as the hands go back and sink deeper down into the chair pose. And then inhale and stand straight up, lengthen your body and exhale and lower your arms down. Now we'll do a simple side angle pose. Start in Tadasana with your feet together, arms and legs extended, long spine, shoulders back. And then bring your hands to your hips and step your feet wide. Feet are parallel. And then turn your right leg out and turn your left toes in slightly. Hands on hips still, lift up through the sides of your body, shoulders back, and then bend your right knee so your right knee comes over your right heel. And rest your right forearm on your right thigh. Stretch your left arm towards the back foot and lengthen your spine away from the back foot. And then lift your left arm up to the sky and pull your right butt cheek forward so it's really underneath you and not sinking back. Keep your knee open so the knee is tracking directly over the center of the right foot. And then sweep your left arm all the way across as you see here. So there's a long fluid line of energy from the back heel all the way through the top fingertips. Be long in your trunk here. Pull the right butt cheek underneath you. Bend the right knee a little more. Exhale, look down. And then inhale and come all the way up, straightening your legs. And switch sides. Now turn the left leg all the way out. Turn the right toes in slightly. Begin with an open chest, shoulders back. Bend your left knee deeply and rest your left forearm on your left thigh. Stretch your right arm towards the back heel as you lengthen your spine, your trunk away from the back heel. And start to bring that left butt cheek truly underneath you. The knee tracking directly over the center of the left foot and then lift your right arm up. Think of lengthening the trunk, lengthening the spine from bottom to top. Spread wide across your chest. Stay firm and strong in the back leg and bent deeply in the left leg. And then sweep your arm all the way across for that fluid line of energy from the back heel to the top fingertips. Breathe here as you gaze at your top hand Lengthen the back leg, lengthen the spine again. Steady and smooth your breathing. Exhale and look down. And then inhale and come all the way up to straight legs. Hands to hips, feet parallel. Shoulders back. And then step your feet together. Start in Tadasana here, feet together, arms and legs extending, and then bring your hands to your hips and step your feet wide. Turn your toes in slightly, the outer edges of the feet parallel, lift up through the legs, thighs back, long spine, and then hook your thumbs and reach your arms up and overhead. Spread the palms, spread the fingers, Reach the arms back, reach the thighs back, lift the belly. Be earthy and firm and extended and engaged in your legs and lift the spine from bottom to top. Pull the thighs and pelvis back so that they're not sinking forward at all. Let your shoulder blades press forward into the rib cage. And breathe here as you create more length in your body. And then exhale and lower the hands down and switch the cross of the thumbs and then stretch your fingertips forward and up again. Press the feet into the floor, spreading the soles of the feet. Draw up through the musculature of the legs and let the very tops of your thighs move back. Let your inner thighs move back. 
Let your buttocks relax and release. Lift the abdomen, lift the rib cage. Let your shoulder blades gently slide down your back to pull your spine up further. Spread the hands and the fingers. Be in your whole body as you breathe here. And then exhale and lower your hands down. Bring your hands to your hips. Lengthen your spine again. Lengthen the side ribs. And then step your feet together. Release your arms and rest in mountain pose, recovering with an open chest. Have your blocks nearby. Bring your hands to your hips. Let your shoulders move back. Lengthen the sides of your waist. And then step your feet wide. Toes in slightly. Outer edges of the feet parallel. Thighs back. Shoulders back. And stretch your arms out to the sides. Radiate out through your limbs. Lengthen up through the top of the head. Lift the low belly. Extend your legs fully and bring your hands back to your hips. And then think of the buttocks lifting and spreading as you start to fold forward, creasing at the hips. Let your knees bend and soften here and take your hands onto the blocks. Let your arms be extended and straight. Buttocks is lifting, inner thighs back, knees soft and stretch your chest forward. Let your abdomen be long here. The front of the trunk is long. You want to avoid rounding in your back like this. Instead, reach the buttocks back, tilting the pelvis accordingly, and stretch the bottom front ribs forward and look forward, even stretching the front of the throat. And then walk the blocks back and start to fold more deeply down. You might not even need the blocks, hands to the floor. Either way, rest your hands down and let your torso relax and release, folding forward with soft knees. The backs of the legs are lifting and spreading wide. Connect your feet to the floor so the inner feet and outer feet are both connecting down. And you can start to straighten the legs a little bit more, but not all the way. Stay soft in the knees. Elongate and relax your trunk downwards. Relax your head. Let your hands be supportive to you. And then bring your hands to your hips, shoulders back. Keep your knees bent as you inhale and come all the way up and step your feet together. And now for an Ardha Prasarita Padottanasana twisted variation. Have your blocks in front of you. Start with feet together, a lifted spine from the inside, and step your feet wide apart now. Toes pointing in, outer feet parallel. Extend your legs, thighs rolling in, thighs back. Stretch out through the arms. Extend your limbs, become very active here and long from the inside. And then bring your hands back to your hips and with your shoulders back, hinge at your hips with soft knees and come forward, bringing your hands onto blocks. And now start to twist to the left so that your left arm will go up towards the ceiling. Keep your knees bent so that you can really keep your buttocks lifting, so you can keep the groins moving back and stretch your spine as you rotate, turning to twist up towards the ceiling, and then lower your left hand down and switch sides. Lift your right arm up to the ceiling as you rotate your trunk up to the right. Soft knees to keep the buttocks lifting. Lengthen your spine forward away from the pelvis, Turning a little more, reach up with the right arm, 
Breathing here. Be firm in your legs. And then lower your right arm down. Take your hands to your hips, shoulders lifting to the ceiling. And then inhale and come on up. And now for the Prasarita Padottanasana dog. Feet wide, hands on hips, long spine, extended legs. And crease at your hips. Bring your hands down to the blocks. You can have bent knees or straight legs here if that's accessible to you. Lift the backs of the legs, lift the buttocks, and start to slide the blocks forward along the floor. And see if you can create a long, fluid line of energy from your fingertips all the way up through the arms, through the elbows, armpits, through the side ribs, the sides of your waist, all the way through the outer hips, which pull back. See if you can connect your feet to the ground, get taller through the legs, lift the fronts of your thighs, lift the backs of your thighs, even lift the inner edges of your legs from bottom to top. Lift the buttocks up, pull the inner thighs back. In general, pull the thighs back and reach your arms forward even more and let your head release down. Breathe here as you pull the thighs back again. Rotate the thighs inwards. And then walk your blocks back to lift the chest. Step your feet a little closer together. Bring your hands to your hips. Shoulders back and reach your chest forward and up to come out of the pose. And then step your feet together. Again, lift the spine, lift from under the collarbones. Now lay down on your back and have a strap handy. Make sure that the flesh of your buttocks is released away from the lower back. So you can bring the flesh of the buttocks towards the feet. And then extend your legs and reach your arms overhead, hands holding the strap at shoulder distance. Extend and elongate your limbs, roll your thighs in, and straighten the legs all the way. Open the feet, open the toes, press your internally rotated thighs down into the floor, and stretch your arms more fully. Really extend and open the arms and the legs, and let your spine receive that stretch. Relax and lengthen the abdomen, and breathe. And then bend your knees, feet flat, and come out of the pose. And now for Supta Parangustasana with a bent knee. So lay down on your back. Have your knees bent and your feet flat and adjust the flesh of the buttocks so that the flesh of the buttocks moves away from your lower back and reach your arms overhead along the floor and create length in your trunk and have a sense of neutrality in the body, relaxing any extraneous tension. And then grab onto your strap. Bring your right knee towards your chest so that you can loop the strap around your right heel and stretch your right leg up towards the ceiling, but keep your right leg bent. And then start to extend the left leg along the floor Make sure that you're internally rotating the left thigh and try not to tuck the pelvis here. You want to try to keep a neutral pelvis. Reach up through the right heel. Keep your spine long, your chest open, shoulder blades sliding down your back. Roll the left thigh in, extend the left leg. Pull your outer right hip away from the right waist. Be in your whole body here. Long abdomen, long spine. Pull the elbows to the sides. 
and stretch your right leg up again. Open feet, open toes. Deep, smooth breath here. And then bend your left leg, release the right leg so that both feet are flat and parallel. And reach your arms overhead. Breathe in neutral here, just lengthening the spine. And then bring your left knee into the chest so you can lasso the, le the strap over the left heel and stretch your left leg up towards the ceiling. Long spine, elbows wide, shoulder blades sliding down your back. Pelvis not tucking here. Pelvis is neutral, so it's the femur that's really moving in the socket. And then roll the right thigh in as you stretch your right leg long. Feet open, toes open, spine lengthening towards the head. Even feel the uppermost area of that right thigh, the root of the right thigh, internally rotating. The outer left hip moving away from the left waist. Stretch up through the left leg. Be long in your belly and steady your breath here. Inhaling and exhaling. And then bend your right knee and bend your left knee so your foot comes to the floor and stretch your arms overhead again to lengthen the trunk and neutralize yourself. Relaxing here. And then turn over to your right side and sit up. Have a bolster nearby for Supta Padangustasana 2. Lay down on your back. Release the flesh of your buttocks away from your low back. Knees bent and feet flat. And then bring your right knee towards your chest and lasso the strap over your right heel. Lift the right leg up to the ceiling. Keep a long spine here. And then bring the bolster just alongside the outer right hip. And start to lengthen out the left leg. Make sure that you're rolling your left thigh internally. And then grab onto the strap with your right hand only. Reach your left arm out to the side and bring your right leg all the way out to the right so your outer right thigh is supported by the bolster. All the limbs are long and radiating from the center here. Get grounded through the left thigh and stretch the inner right thigh all the way to the inner right ankle. So the right groin is getting a stretch here. Be long in your spine, be even in your trunk, shoulder blades sliding down the back. Let the front surface of the spine be long. Breathe deeply here. Keep energized through the left arm, energized through the right leg, energized through the left leg, and then reach your right leg back up towards the ceiling. And then bend your right knee, place your right foot down, bend your left knee, place your left foot down, and move the bolster to the other side of your body. Bring your left knee towards your chest. Lasso the strap over your left heel and reach the left leg up. And then internally rotate the right thigh as you stretch the right leg long. Be long in your spine here. And then grab onto the strap with your left hand only. Pull the bolster close in towards your left hip. Reach the right arm out to the right and open the left leg out to the left so the outer left thigh is supported by the bolster. 
Roll the right thigh in. Lengthen the spine, especially the front surface of the spine, and breathe here and stretch the inner left thigh towards the inner left ankle, really opening that left groin. Extend your limbs here. Smooth, steady inhalation. Smooth, steady exhalation. And then bring your left leg back up to the center. And release the strap. Bend both knees, feet flat. Move the bolster to the side and recover here in neutral. Now we'll do a supported pose, which is a wonderful exploration of neutral. Put a loop in your strap and step your legs and feet right through that loop so the loop is around your thighs and place the block right in between your feet. And then place another block in between your knees and tighten the strap so that the strap is firmly around your middle thighs. This creates an aligned parallel position in your legs that's very supported by the props. And then lay back, release your buttock flesh away from your low back, extend your arms away from your legs along the floor, open the hands and fingers, and breathe into your rib cage. Enjoy this supported neutrality of your lower body. Feel a very neutral pelvis, neither tucking nor arching. A neutral supported pelvis that's relaxing into the support of the floor. The abdomen is soft and long. And then you can bring your arms to a different position out to the sides or hands down closer to the hips, whatever feels right to you. Breathe here and relax. Relax into the support of the floor and the props. See if you can release any extraneous tension. As you breathe, create an unsticking of body parts that are glued together, an unwinding of any unnecessary contractions. Relax and release your face, your belly, your neck, your arms, your pelvis, your buttocks. Smooth and steady breath here. Undoing, unwinding, ungripping, unsticking. Smooth inhalation, steady, gradual exhalation. And now bring your knees towards your chest and remove the block that was between the knees. And then slide the strap up and off of your legs and roll to your side and come on up. Have a bolster and a strap ready for a variation of supported fish. Have your back to the horizontal bolster and release your buttock flesh away from your lower back. And then lay back over the bolster so the bolster is supporting your rib cage. Think of the bolster being right underneath your shoulder blades and stretch your arms up and overhead with the strap in your hands at about shoulder distance apart. Knees are bent, feet are flat. And when you feel steady and stable here, then you can start to release and lengthen your legs. Create length in your whole body. Relax and release into the support of the bolster and enjoy this supported extension of your spine. 
Let the thighs be heavy. Let the abdomen be long and relaxed. And give some energy to your arms and legs to extend and lengthen the limbs, to lengthen through the elbows and the knees. Release and relax the muscles of your back and your neck. See if you can breathe into your rib cage, breathing really into the lungs. Open the soles of the feet, open the toes. Relax and release as you lengthen here. Steady inhale. Steady exhale. And now one at a time, bend your knees, bring your feet flat, and slowly roll over to your right side. And then come up to sit. Now we'll practice Shavasana with a bolster under the knees and a blanket underneath the head so there's a little bit of softness under the head. Set yourself up to lay down and move the flesh of the buttocks away from the lower back. And then pull the blanket into place so that your head is supported by the softness of the blanket and relax and release your legs over the bolster. So the bolster is underneath the knees and underneath the lower thighs. And slide your shoulder blades down your back slightly. Turn your palms to face up towards the ceiling and then relax and release everything. Allow yourself to be supported by the floor, supported by the blanket and the bolster. Relax and release your hands and your feet and your face, your limbs, your pelvis, and your trunk. Slow down your exhalations. Smooth, steady exhales. <laughs> 